Claire's. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the No Clearance Podcast, where we use hip hop and R&B as a catalyst to discuss life and everything in between. I am half of this amazing duo, your boy T, repping the DMV straight out of PG, and I'm here with the young king, the legend straight out of Somerville, Mr. J. How you doing, my brother? I'm good today, you know, living the dream, just doing my thing. So like that, uh, that kind of rhyme, didn't that rhyme? No, I see you, bro. I tried to rhyme just a little bit, just a tad. You, <laughs> it did get better. Whatever, you get better. Keep it going. Just keep going. Just keep going. Anyway, so this week we uh, had to change our schedule up. We actually normally record with our guests the day before we drop the episode, but we had the pleasure of. Um, recording the second half of our episode this week on Saturday with an amazing guest. We had a uh, family. We had one of my my good sisters, Alexis Jackson, Alexis V. Jackson on the show. Yeah, she, she said, don't forget the V. Don't forget the V. Don't forget the V. She is an amazing uh, poet and she has a book coming out in the fall called My Sister's Country. So everybody, please be on the lookout. Um, man, man. She was dropping some gems. Mm-hmm. She was dropping some serious gems throughout this episode. So, I, go ahead, bro. All I gotta say is y'all better y'all y'all better just listen to that part, man. You only listen to this part. Listen, just fast forward if you don't want to. Fast forward, listen to that part because it was just man. Tune in, y'all. Tune in. We got to discuss lemonade, and we talked about being independent within relationships. Uh, we discussed. What was Beyonce really upset about? You know what I'm saying? We talked about how men protect incorrectly. Yes. Which is a very interesting conversation. Very, very about interesting. How uh, being, you know, coming to the relationship with everything together, in quotes, you know what I'm saying? And uh, mm-hmm. it was just, it really, we learned so much from her. So I really hope you yeah. guys enjoy the episode. But before we get started, of course, you know how we do. We got to start our episodes out with our Black Women Crush and our Thank You Black Mans for the week, yep. you know, uh, and because this is Black History Month. Happy Black History Month to you, my brother. Happy Black again. History Month. Happy, happy Black History Month. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. So we, uh, Jay, please, what is our Black Women Crush for the week? So my Black Women Crush for this week, in honor of us doing Lemonade this week by Beyonce, by Queen B or Queen Bay. Either way, she's the queen. But my Black Woman Crush Wednesday will be Melina Matsukis. I apologize if I said her name wrong, but Melina Matsukis. Melina Matsukis, she is a director She's a music video. She was primarily a music video director. If you don't know, you definitely seen one of her music videos. If you white, black, or anything, she di- directed music videos for Lady Gaga, Beyonce, Neo, everybody. She got Grammys on top of Grammys. I me- I just found this out recently that you you remember back in the day, 106 in Park, when yeah. Beyonce dropped that dropped a music video every day for that album. What was it four? Yeah. Remember she dropped a music video every day for like five days, like Kitty Cat, the other one. Um, I believe the whole you. album. I don't I, remember, but I believe you. Yeah, she dropped. <laughs> let me tell you, man, upgrade you, man. When she dropped Sugar Mama, Kit Kat, Ooh, Green Light, okay. all the remember all them. All I, know, them I remember I, all them. Remember, yes, remember that. Yeah, she, she, Melina Mazzucas directed all those with Beyonce. Wow. She so worked. she'd been with Beyonce since 2007 and she directed her most recent uh, music video she did for Beyonce was Formation. Ooh, that she was a good one. That one. That was a good one. And too. she also, Beyonce is credited as a director for the Lemonade movie, but she was the creative director behind that. So she was helping Beyonce out directing the whole Lemonade, help, Lemonade visual album, the one that came out with the album Lemonade. That's what's up, she, bro. She re- she directed all my favorite Rihanna music videos when I was a child. Amen. 
Rude Boy and Hard. Amen. And uh, bless the other one. So let me tell you, this those are my favorite music videos. She directed S and M. All my favorite Rihanna music videos and all my favorite Beyonce music videos. Okay, uh, she's a legend. She she got a Grammy for uh, the music video she directed for uh, Rihanna. We found love. You know, remember mm-hmm. that song? We found love with a friend. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she got a Grammy for Formation, of course, because you know Beyonce. But she also directed the movie Queen and Slim, which that's was- right. Which was her first movie to direct. Great movie. Yes, and she directed, and she directed seven episodes, and is and is an and is an executive producer on this year. Hey, Issa. and she directed, <laughs> and she directed one of my favorite episodes of Master of None, the Thanksgiving episode, the one that put Ooh, Lena Waithe on the map. That won an Emmy, right? Yeah, she wow. won an Emmy for that. This woman is and legendary. she directed and she directed a bunch of commercials for Adidas, Nike, Beats. The, the woman's a beast, all right? She's a beast. If anybody's looking to be a director, hit right. her up. Hit her you up. Know, she's 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 a beast. Like she's direct she's directed so much stuff like it's ridiculous. Like That's music dope. videos and she got another movie coming out, I don't know, but she has work plans for another movie coming out and she got just signed a deal with FX. To, they got the movies. Uh, do something to do something. I don't know what she's doing with FX, but she got to deal with FX. The woman's worked with all our fav- favorites Rihanna, Beyonce, Alicia Keys, Neo, J Lo, Lil Wayne, Whitney Houston, Robin Thick, Issa, Missy Elliott, Issa, Issa Ray, Issa, <laughs> and LeBron James, and Issa. Yeah, and Issa. <laughs> Of course, I'm of just, course. I'm stupid. I'm sorry. I'm stupid. sorry. She, I'm just telling. She, it's like she, she's just, she's a beast. She's a beast. So I want to make say again, Melina Matsukis. That's my Black Woman Crush Wednesday. Thank you for your greatness. And she even directed the tambourine video. Whoa, what every time Marie ain't gonna get yeah, this. Yeah, she directed that one. Every time Marie. Yes. Oh, shout out to Eve for that one, bro. That's the last song I you. heard from her. Right? That was a classic. She, the woman is a beast. That's all I got to say. And she directed the music video for one of my favorite Beyonce songs, Pretty Hurts. So and that's, this saying. is a male dominated field. Yes. Behind the, yes. behind being behind the camera like that. Yes. Um, and then for her to stick with being so. For her to be so productive with black people, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, is special. What yeah. she did is truly special. So, um, thank you, black yes, woman. Thank, thank you, black woman. All right. I think that's I, my best black woman crush Wednesday. The most informed I've ever been on one. Well, I see you reading through Wikipedia. <laughs> I was I was not reading through Wikipedia. It looked like you were scrolling. <laughs> I think nah, I wasn't scrolling. I was just I was I had all of them. I had all of all. You of got them. a big monitor. I had them all written up on the side. <laughs> I'm playing with you, bro. All I right. had them all up on the side. I'm gonna keep mine short. You took probably took up half of my time, so it's nah, all you. good. Nah, I don't even got much on to do. He just started, like. Anyway, my thank you, black man, goes to a, a young brother who is currently uh, trying to fight the good fight. I'm going to give a big shout out. Thank you, black man, to the mayor of Baltimore, Brandon M. Scott. Um, he came to my attention when, he, of course, he was elected as the mayor, and his uh, his mayor profile, his mayor profile picture on the Baltimore website. That man had the biggest fro, the most well kept fro I've ever seen on a politician that's a hard thing to do very you know, hard thing nice to do cut. bro the crazy thing is um you know when i see people in those like powerful uh positions a lot of them i don't know if you know this maybe i might be wrong but a lot of them keep their facial hair or they like that super clean cut and yeah. so to see a brother like that really look like he's being himself um, he really looked like he's a true representation of what the city should be. Um, 
He's uh one of he's a member of the Young Elected Officials Club. I don't know if it's a club, but he's a member of the Young Elected Officials. Um, he fo- he's focusing on centering equity, uh, you know, mm. stronger communities and leading a voice in deducing violence in the city. But he believes the violence in the city is a public health issue. You know yeah. what I'm saying? He's, he's trying to attack it in, in a different way. And so mm-hmm. I uh, I want to wish him the best in leading the city of Baltimore, bringing Baltimore back to uh, a, a more prominent state. Uh, and then I think the funniest part, I remember seeing on the news a couple of weeks ago, he was announcing something about COVID. And some guy was in the back, like just yelling at him about COVID. He go, shorty, 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 you got to relax, shorty. I'm trying to announce, I'm trying to help the people, shorty. <laughs> And I was like, see, that's the type of people you need leading cities like Baltimore, D.C., Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? Somebody who know how to talk to the people. Yeah. So, uh, Black man, thank you for taking on this challenge. We wish you the best. Uh, if anything, I don't know what I can do. I live in PG, but I, more, <laughs> more respect to you for being a mayor of Baltimore. That's a tough job. Yeah. That's, All right, that so is hard. Brandon M. Scott, just want to say thank you. All right. All right. Now. Thank you. Before we Black get man. before we get into the interview, look, the interview's coming. Look, y'all can either skip this or fast forward. I don't care. But we're going to do it. We got our rant of the week, and we yep. have our dirty joke of the week. So well, We're going to get it out the way now so you can listen to this greatness. Jaden, I'd like you to give me, uh, let me know when I can start, sir. I have 30 seconds oh. to rant. Oh, no, I mean, my time up. You know, we only give him 30 seconds. You know, give me 30 seconds. All right, here we go. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Yesterday, I got my degree in the mail, and it took me back to 2018 when I applied to Johns Hopkins and got denied. I just want to say, Johns Hopkins, you trash. You ass. <laughs> okay, I applied to you niggas, and you ain't even asked me for an essay, and I don't know how you deny me, but it's all good. I got my degree done in two years. I know some people still getting their degree done when I started, so you know what? Forget you, Josh Hawkins. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Shout out to Penn State University. This is how we do all day. We are Penn State. Ah. Everybody else? <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. All I got to say is fuck you, John Hopkins. I knew you didn't want to say it, but I'm going to say it. Let's be honest, though. It's really turned into just another name. Yeah. Hey, anybody getting your education, just go get your education. It really don't matter where you go. I'm be honest with you. Shout out to the HBCUs and whatever, <laughs> but you go where you go, get your education, yeah. and get the hell out of there, bro. Exactly. Make the best you know, of it. Is that, as long as you got that paper, that's all that matters. All right. All right, this was nasty. I called the school ass. Ma, I'm sorry, Ma. I'm trying. I'll be trying. I'll be trying, Ma. Go ahead, bro. This this one's nasty. This was real nasty. Let me tell you. All right. Um, what's long green and smells like bacon? Long green and smells like bacon. What is it? Coming to Frost Fingers. Because <laughs> you know, Miss Piggy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> hey, bro, I thought it was funny and I did. I forgot. That's that's wild, bro. That's wild. That's oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my gosh! All right, all right, people. Yep. Enjoy, enjoy the I hope episode. You guys enjoy the episode. Enjoy this interview once again, man. Uh, Shout out to Alexis for being on the episode yep. with us. We truly thank you. We're going to take all those words of wisdom you gave us and try to apply it to your life, you, to our lives. You know, we're really going to work on being more loving and listening brothers in this world. So, um, and you guys enjoy. Shout out to Beyonce for this great work. Yes, Everybody, shout out Beyonce. Once again, uh, stay blessed, y'all. We can't say, we can't say goodbye because we're not leaving. Right. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy. All right. <laughs> All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the No Clearance Podcast. Uh, Jay, we got a special guest with us today. I'm uh, I'm truly excited. I'm truly excited. So, you know, let me hype her up real quick. Go ahead. Let me hype her up. All right. First of all, straight out of Philly, 
and you already know, all right, I got uh, Alexis Jackson, all right, she is, first of all, I consider her a big sister, all right, this is, this is, uh, this is family, but she is, uh, what's the word, highly decorated, I <laughs> feel, is that the word? Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So first off, she is a, uh, is a professor or a lecturer? They say a lecturer. Um, yeah, both. Lecturer okay. just means I'm part-time there. But yes. <laughs> okay. She is a professor at the University of San Diego. Shouts out to them. West Side. <laughs> she has a master's in fine arts from Columbia University. Shouts out to Aunt Fair Fair Griffin. Hey. You already Go. know. She had a BA. She got her bachelor's at Messiah College. She graduated magna cum laude. That. And during her time there, she studied at the Oxford University. And for those who don't Damn. know what that is, look it up. <laughs> <laughs> Not look it up. <laughs> she is currently in the process of writing her first book it is titled My Sister's Country, which will come out in the fall. Uh, and she teaches a course called Black Women and Poetic Form from Wheatley to Beyonce. Alexis, how you doing, girl? <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing great, considering everything going on in the world right now. You know, um, rest in power to the sleep Tyson, you know, that yes. I want her. So yes. Yes. I'm doing great considering, you know, just, just walking in her her footsteps out here um, and everything she did. She said, end of the day, she just wanted people to say she did her best. So that's what we trying to do. Black yes. excellence and our best, you know what I'm saying? But I'm doing great. How are y'all? I'm good. I'm good. good. The, uh, I'm good. This weather, it is, it is stupid cold out today. Yeah. It's I don't know about here that. Too. I know <laughs> you out there on the West Coast, man, enjoying uh, like the good weather. Yo, it's like twenty something degrees. It was. Uh, it's seven here. It's seven over there. Whoa, what? It's seven. Yes. <laughs> it it's hurts seven. your face when you walk outside. If it's seven. Yeah. Oh, oh, it's so bad. Oh no! Oh That's no! Tragic, it's so cold. Yeah, we it's had so a couple cold. of like thunderstorms um and some windstorms but we i think we might be at like 60 right now we chilling oh wow <laughs> oh wow oh i wish it's a beautiful thing it's a that's a beautiful i'm gonna just picture that in my mind you know yeah. what i'm saying as we go through this as we go through this um man so we're here to we're here to discuss lemonade an yeah. album that yeah, yeah. Like this album changed the game. Uh, like we got no, we got to set this up. We got to set this up, right? Because this album came out in 2016, and first off, the the promotion, the way it dropped, everything about it was so detailed. Yeah, no fakes. Yeah. This, uh, I remember that year because it was the Super Bowl. I forget the, the year of the Super Bowl, but the Panthers were playing the Broncos. Yeah. And they had some, I know, Bruno Mars and some 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 band. No, it, was, it was Bruno Mars and Beyonce. No, yeah. it just no, no, no Beyonce, <laughs> wasn't, Beyonce wasn't on the list. It was some white boys, too. So no, no, I, we, we knew Beyonce was on the list. No, oh, no, 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 yeah. no. Right. Was, she was a surprise guest, bro. Yeah, but I remember because my fiance doesn't like football, yeah. and the only reason she watched Super Bowl is because she knew Beyonce was gonna be in a halftime show. Shoot, well, I did. I look, I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. Yeah, she, she had done. They had. Uh, when did um, Destiny Child do it? They had done it um, in twenty thirteen. Yeah, yeah, they did it in twenty thirteen. I remember and that. Pop back up for the yep. Bruno Mars one. So she performs in the Super Bowl. Coldplay, y'all. Coldplay. 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 Yeah. Coldplay was guys. like, from what I remember, Coldplay was like the headline. Maybe I'm true. Yeah. Or maybe it was Bruno Mars I'm, I'm probably Coldplay. Wrong. But to me, to me. It don't matter. Beyonce was the headline. Right. Beyonce well, popped out say, to me. 
I don't remember either how I was marketed, but I know my my husband says I'm in the beehive. I don't know if I'm in the beehive because I do think Beyonce <laughs> can do some wrong. She's a human being. However, <laughs> the beehive was buzzing about her being on the Super So I knew she's going to be there. I don't oh, remember okay. if marketed it that way, but we was like, ah, the rumor is. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it was a rumor. It was yeah. a rumor because it seemed like but she NFL. dropped the music video the day before. She dropped no, she dropped for me. She dropped the, after the, the day, Super Bowl. I thought it was the day before she dropped the music. Nah, video. Oh, she dropped. Go ahead, sorry. Was it was it the day before or was it like she dropped the trailer for it the day before? She did something. <laughs> she did something. Yeah, I wish we had more info, but yeah. She she performs at halftime. With the Black Panther, with the Black Panther uh, theme outfits, I mean, straight up kills it. And next thing you know, tour dates didn't even drop an album yet. <laughs> <laughs> tour dates and the formation. formation tour. That's all we had. Oh yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So the song dropped on February six. The album, of course, was in April. Yeah. She drops tour dates. Like two, three months before and I was, the album was dropped. My ticket as soon as them tour dates. People was buying the ticket show. Because I don't even know what tour. song. We don't even know what she about to talk about, but it's just like, It yo. don't matter. So the hype leading up to the album was crazy. And during that time, Jay-Z drops title. Streaming yeah. wars start. Everybody's yep. like dropping albums on different platforms. Yep. And that was oh, yeah. why I got a title. Cause yes. that's the only way you can see the visual album, and I was like, "Well, I, I'm right. getting the title." It was on HBO. Uh, yeah, the visual album was on HBO for one night, and that was and it. I endured yep. that college Wi-Fi to get through that whole thing. <laughs> Remember, we had to illegally download it for all the we girls. Was illegally downloading. <laughs> Did we, you we illegally yeah. downloaded the Beyonce album, and we we was emailing it to everybody. Yeah, we, sending that we should have been charging people. We, we really should have. <laughs> We gave that out to, for free way too much. Yeah. <laughs> for real. No, I got a title. I got a title just so I could I could keep watching it and study I was, that song. Right. I, I, look, that release on title is like one of the major business moves during that time. Uh, with, with all the streaming wars, like she was part of that. Um like it's just it's just crazy. It's crazy. It was how only she, on title for the longest. Yeah. And still, and still broke records. Personally, yeah. I think that's why she didn't win the Grammy. The the I think <laughs> I think that might have been why Adele got it before her. I think that was a business move on their part. But you know, I'm just I'm just you know hypothetical. I you know they was tripping. That makes sense. They definitely tripping, <laughs> but that's what they do. I, don't exactly. get me wrong, Adele's album put you know make you feel some type of way, but there's no way. Yeah, no, it was better right. eliminate, you know what I'm saying? No way. It, even Adele knew she should have won. Yeah, Adele broke the trophy she, at. She was like, yeah. take it. <laughs> take, take, <laughs> please take it. Please take this trophy. <laughs> oh my goodness, man. So all right. So shout out, shout out to Beyonce for the impeccable business moves. Um, Lexi, she been in our lives. She's been in the game for like all of our lives. But when when would you say? was the first time you became a fan? Oh man, see, it's tricky because I was raised super Christian. Um, as Cousin Tyler knows, you know, yeah. he had Bible men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Didn't really watch Superman like that. <laughs> we was like, what is Bible man? Yo. So, you know, he had Bible men. We wasn't allowed to watch secular stuff, listen to secular stuff, but, you know, um, the school bus rides was lit because uh, I was <laughs> going to school, uh, you know, in Philly and right outside of Philly. And we had black bus drivers moving on the Philly bus. I'm um, getting dropped off at my grandma's house. So anyway, um, you know, you hear some Destiny's Child kind of sort of around, but we wasn't allowed to listen to that in the house. But I remember specifically I was in middle school. I mean, you know, say, say my name was a big deal. Mm -hmm. Couldn't even really tell you. Uh, what year that was or whatever. I, I just knew it. Everybody knew that song. Right. But um, when I got hype, hype, and I was like, nah, this is it. Uh, it was definitely middle school. It was like sixth or seventh grade. And that was when Destiny Shaw had dropped their last album. 
Mm, and that was a big deal for sure. I, I have borrowed the album from one of my baby sister's friends. <laughs> I, I had borrowed it from her and was able to burn a CD when my parents were asleep on the computer. <laughs> and that is how I became a fan because I wasn't allowed to buy the music. Wasn't even supposed to be listening to it. Right. But nah, like Destiny Fulfilled, man, that was, that was, yeah, that was my my album. That's when I could learn all the songs on the album. And from that <laughs> one onward, it's just been, you know, me it's and been, forever. Man. She definitely oh, narrated man. my life. Like she just has been there. So that, there's yeah. all that. That's definitely like me for me with J. Cole. That's how yeah. I feel with Cole. Um, so what I mean, what do you feel makes her makes her who she is? Like, why is everyone black women specifically? Why are they so why yeah. do you feel they so in love with Beyonce? It's it's so many reasons. I think first and foremost, she's a black woman who was always a black woman. I think <clears throat> um strategically business wise and we know this there's a lot of books out there about her and about how all this happened Matthew Knowles being you know the brains behind the whole situation initially um Beyonce was uh definitely put forward as the lead singer but also she was to always look different from everyone else in that group strategically right because they want to be a world famous superstar group which means you got to appeal to people across the globe and colorism is real so she was always to have blonde hair she was always to look different you know she was the lighter one (laughs) the lightest one often in the group um so that was always strategic especially because you have those videos of her when she was about 17 I, i believe and they were asking her what her her plans were and she said i'm going to own my own company mm. i'm going to put in music like she, her plan was never to just be you know hence ivy park <laughs> you know yeah. her plan was never to just yeah. be talent right so she always knew what she wanted but i think um music has changed the world has changed um for the better in some ways um but specifically with black women we didn't have our representation has always been marginalized um we've always had specific groups we were told to look look at right because when it came to mainstream music and what was allowed out they didn't want it wasn't 30 million different like black groups right so destiny's child in particular for my generation like that was who we had you know we can name a few we could be like oh we had ashanti and um I could cherish later on, remember, do it, do it, do it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But in terms of a group with longevity, that. um, who like we who narrated, we had um, if I remember correctly, middle school, it was B2K and it was Destiny's <laughs> Child. <laughs> like those were the main two, the main two groups. Yo, and moving wow. moving forward with that, um, yeah. you know, that was how I framed myself. I even write about this in my poetry book. Um, where people were like, oh, you're too dark, you gotta be Kelly, right? So you just, they they were mm. literally how we saw ourselves, mm. how we conceived of who we were as women. And then um, Beyonce goes solo and continues to top charts, specifically within the the world she's given, right? She's told as a Black artist, as a Black woman, you have to do R&B, you gotta do hip hop. So yeah. that's what she does, which is yeah. why Lemonade becomes so epic because she's like, no, I'm gonna put out a country record. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like now I'm gonna put out a rock record. Like, submit me yeah. to these categories, Grammys. Like, this is what we're doing. Black people have more than that. But um, all that to say, Beyonce's a big deal because number one, her longevity. Number two, the fact that she's a businesswoman. But number number three, the fact that she is able to symbolize um, everything. I think we we want in a figurehead. I think that's why we call her queen, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, when the yeah. monarchy is doing terrible. Uh, countries doing terrible people look to the queen as the queen mother I'm talking about England mm. in particular um, to be a certain way to carry them and we do the same thing with our president you know I ain't going to talk about but you know we're like oh my gosh the country's doing terrible and look at what our leader's doing right and so it's like Beyonce um, has always just been that black woman killing the game giving amazing performances um vocalizing her truth and representing us really really well um and of course as she's grown older and gotten her money right she could say whatever she wants to say uh that has also been specifically black you know which formation marked that you know i like my my negro nose with jackson five nostrils (laughs) like you know well she wasn't saying that stuff before because she couldn't there's there's all of that um and she's always been while she we call it the, the the great silence 
like period of silence where Beyonce didn't talk yeah. to to other people and make announcements and things like that, have interviews. Um, even within that, her music spoke for it, right? We we had we had guesses um into how uh human she was. And she's been honest about that through her music while still keeping herself um safe and healthy, speaking to self-care before we even really, really mainstream that. So yeah, yeah man, Beyonce just narrated our whole lives and done it beautifully and done it gracefully and never you know, she's had a few missteps. That's why I said I don't yeah. know if I could say, you know, I'm a total because I'm like, nah, she kind of messed up with the black face pictures that resurfaced. However, um, she nah, she she's definitely done it well. Yeah. And and that's that's all you know, that's all we can really say. And she represents us globally very well. Couldn't have been said better. Yeah. That's for sure. Um when I like you said, when I listened to the the project. It just made me realize Beyonce is her own genre of music. She, yeah. you, you can't, you can't put her in the R and B category. You can't put her in hip hop. Like she has made her own version of what music yeah. is. You can't really like put her in a box of like right. a genre. It's just like it's, it's Beyonce. Awesome. And like I guess like, she, and she's able to to. And that's why again she's significant. She makes us question why we attempt to put any black artist in these boxes right like why is it that um Janelle Monae in particular you know she often gets put as like underground but she's not <laughs> like yeah, she's right. not underground at all right um and you know she can have a print sounding record which is pop I mean it's a pop yeah. record right yeah. but people will still want to put that somewhere else so yeah I think we she had she definitely has some R&B classic R&B records but like y'all yeah. said I think if you try to categorize a whole album as being one thing it's like can't really do that she got too much going on you know too she's a powerhouse much. um at much. what she does professionally which is music too much uh jay jay yeah what did you get in it do you because do, do you consider yourself part of beehive yes not, not not particularly but you know i respect where respect is due, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <You ain't> like <laughs> I know that you can't say anything bad about Beyonce around oh, a bunch of black women. No, you, I got joke. Yeah, you got to avoid that at all costs. But at the same time, I respect Beyonce. Like, I've never disliked Beyonce ever in my life. Like, look, listening to this album now, I already realized I've already listened to it a bunch, a hundred times at least. Yeah. Like, I was listening to it and I'm like, oh, I've I've heard all these songs. I in my head, I was like, I've never listened to Be the Lemonade like that before. And then now I'm thinking about it. After listening, I was like, Oh, I've heard every single one of these songs. Yeah, you are so a black woman enough. To them. Yeah. So I've I'm not in the beat. I wouldn't say I'm in the beehive, but I would not let anyone say anything bad about Beyonce because right. that, that's our queen. You yeah. know, it's the queen queen yeah, bee. But um, I've I've I love Beyonce. <laughs> That's all I can say. Like, <laughs> who and who doesn't? And that's the thing. Yeah. I'm like, the only reason I would say I'm not fully in, because I'm in. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, I see. I see. She rocking that Ivy Park. Fully in is because she, you know, I think she's human. I mean, I can't. We can't, you know. But yeah, I'm not gonna let nobody sit there and like go in on her. Being a black person in America is complicated. Yeah. Uh, along with you know succeeding in capitalism which is what yeah. what she's doing right so it's yeah. complicated so i've been to see her and um you know say that she's free of critique but not nah, she yeah. dope and you ain't never yeah. going to <laughs> man uh jay and i was in college and we was at a party and i just say uh i go hey jay watch this i was like man forget me all say i i I had like five or six of them just come to me, like throwing punches, like throwing bones. I'm on slaps. the ground. I was like, Cups can't being help. Thrown. Can't help. He was like, nah, bro. <laughs> I was like, I get it that. You the you one who wanted to be funny. These the same people through play CDs no at Kerry Hilson. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> can't be doing that. They don't play games. Oh, they don't play games, man. What happened to Kerry Hilson? Uh, she was in that movie. Uh, <laughs> Uh, before Christmas was it the last almost it? almost yeah, Christmas. Christmas. She was in that movie. She was in a couple another BET movie with Kelly. Actually, I'm sure they had a conversation. Yeah. Uh, but like... yeah, yeah. no, nah, she she's all right. But she yeah. was you know that was during the time she was coming. She's been a writer, songwriter. Yeah. But she was coming out as an artist, and I was like, 
Yeah, you, you don't you don't talk bad about Beyonce. Yeah, um uh, and your career. She had Beyonce's endured almost every beef, invisible beef possible. Like it, I'm, I mean, at least for me, like Beyonce and Ashanti used to be a thing at one point. I didn't um, know that. I think when when Beyonce was coming up, it was like Beyonce, uh, Aaliyah. I, I I might be wrong about that one. Beyonce, Aaliyah. Even nowadays, they be like, yo, they be putting up scenarios like, yo, what if Aaliyah was still alive? <laughs> like, yeah, would, be, would, would Jay Z have married mean, Aaliyah? Some other stuff, right? I think that's part of why people, you know, go so hard for Beyonce. But it's the idea that you know, it's two people feel like they got to pit black women against each other. Because, like I said, historically. If the label got to pick a black band, they picking one black band. So it was, yeah, it was that, yeah, right? They not going right. back. <laughs> this wasn't Motown everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just so sad. it is. I mean, I, I feel like that spirit and that, that nature to be like, okay, who better did it? It's still there. Um, yeah. And what's, what's also sad about it is that part of that is cultural and is acceptable. It's just that it gets, it gets taken out of, like blown out of proportion and taken out of context. What I mean by that is, you know, black people, we have a culture of dissing each other and laughing about it. So playing the dozen yeah. is one of yeah. them, right? Just being like, nah, man, your mama did it out like this. But you can never be Beyonce. Like those things don't mean that you're a horrible person. You ugly. Uh, your complexion means this. It's just us, you know, fooling. And I feel like oftentimes that gets taken um, yeah. too far. And literally because of the culture we live in, where only one black person can succeed, right? We can't have a whole. Uh, and that's and that's a whole other conversation about decentering whiteness. Mm, <laughs> but when word. you decenter whiteness, you understand <laughs> you know, we all can be there together. Whiteness yeah, that yeah. only one, only one, you know, can be in the space and a certain number, and they have limitations. Preach on, sister. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying, like you, you know, it's like if I'm coming, my whole crew coming with me. What's up? Exactly. Like it's exactly. room for all of us. I'm never threatened by another poet, another writer. It's what we do. I think that's why. I like how Beyonce, like, whenever she got the chance to bring back Destiny's Child, she does it. Yeah. You know, because yes, she could definitely I mean, perform those songs by herself. <laughs> we yeah. we could talk about it with the album, fam. Like, I mean, she, worse on Shitty, who I knew, because, you know, I'm, I'm a poet. I love this stuff. I eat it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah. Um, so I knew about worse on Shitty. She had become kind of viral. Well, not kind of. She, she had one poem in particular that went viral. Um, and you know, the Academy, when it comes to poets, people a little, they be side eyeing um, viral poets. They just mm. do. Um, there, there's a, a, there's a little shade to internet poets, I'll say. Uh, but Worse on Shit is dope to me. Um, and so she had become, you know, kind of popular. Well, had that viral video happen and became popular and she had her book come out. Um, but Beyonce chooses to collab with her to put her on the visual album, right? She's not mm. on the album, um, but she's on the visual album. Heavy, right. like all the yeah. interludes, <laughs> like. Oh, heavy. okay. That's who. That's who's helping her with. Yeah, with she co wrote it all together. Yes, and some of oh, the wow. stuff I had heard before, and she, you know, pulled some of her old stuff, but she and Beyonce collaborated to write wow. them, those things. So, um, talking about when that's she's dope. in front of that big house in Louisiana with um, Zendaya, you know, yeah, <laughs> like, nah, that was yeah. uh, that was Amanda, dope. Um, you know, she has all, Serena's in the joint, like what basically Beyonce yep. brings everybody with her. Chloe it's like, yo, Holly come on. Yep. It's a beautiful thing. Even uh, I know even when she goes on tour, she has uh, black guitars, black drummers, all yeah. female, like an all female band. Everything is just black. that was with the Beyonce album. Yes, when she did the, that, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful uh, thing. the the homecoming performance. Yeah, yes sir, had, yes sir. You Let's see that documentary? Yeah, Yo, I right. watched that thing three times. <laughs> three? Me too. Me that too. I, I watched it three beautiful. times. Bro. I watched it. I watched it once. I watched especially it, uh, the fact that she don't like she's at that position in her fame. She can't. She can't go anywhere. So yeah. when she got up on that stage and said, I'm the first, you know, black woman to perform at Coachella, or is it the black artist? She might have been the first black yeah, artist. Yeah, it's a headline. It's a yes, headline. The headline, yeah, the headline. She's like, ain't that about a bitch? Like, you better, you <laughs> Man, better girl. You he better sang, made it a whole stage. concert. She sang the black like, national fuck anthem, your shit, bro. B. <laughs> she sang the black national anthem, bro. She, she had a bunch of white people swag surf and they didn't even know what it was. Right. Listen. Listen. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Speaking and, of that, oh. Uh, this this gonna air in February. So happy Black History Month to you. Yes. 
How we <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, we we got it. We, look, I hate when people are just good at going to February and don't walk past me and not say happy Black History Month. Like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> this this whole month is is for me about people. I should we should get that. We deserve to celebrate. But yeah. the sadly, it's, it's not even classes, a thirty day month. But every day should predominantly be. white classes. I definitely be like, Happy Black History Month, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> they yeah, they better say it back. That's Hello. the truth. Oh man! All right, let's 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 dive a little bit into the album. All right, I got I got a question. We're gonna get to some 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 relationship stuff. Uh, I'm gonna Ooh. take this out of uh, Beyonce. I'm gonna take a line from Beyonce and uh, hold up. So, what's worse, looking jealous <laughs> or crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Oh Lord! <laughs> <laughs> either y'all, either y'all can answer. But what, what, what do you think is worse, looking jealous or crazy? Go ahead, Jalen. Oh, um, uh, <laughs> I feel like looking crazy is worse than jealous. Because hmm. I feel like you can be jealous for little things, but looking crazy is just you're looking crazy. Like, like you can be jealous over something like, oh man, I'm jealous that he he got. The, the last the last slice of pizza you know what i'm saying like <laughs> jealous could be little like could be jealous could be little like it like nothing crazy like nothing serious but being looking crazy in regards especially in garage regards to relationships it's like if you're going crazy i mean there's a lot of emotions behind when you start going crazy it's like just like jealous to the next level mm. you know what i'm saying um <laughs> i see what you say <laughs> but let me let me throw this out there. I've said this before. I don't want nobody taking offense. I find uh I find a lot of women to be like crazy as a normal. <laughs> like oh, Lord, fix it, G. Oh, <laughs> nah, oh, most women got like a tad bit of crazy in them. So for me, jealous is worse <laughs> because no one was just part of this everyday thing. Maybe just me and I don't understand. But I feel like jealousy can truly make someone act very much out of character. Um, do I have any examples? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you, what do you define as crazy if crazy yeah. is the norm for women, if that's the case? Why I mean, is crazy the norm for women? I don't, I'm not saying I, it's the norm, say, but I would that's what you just say said. That crazy, okay, I did say that. Crazy yeah. is the norm for folks in relationships <laughs> mm, okay. okay i think huh. i think no matter the gender binary non-binary female met well females under woman man um non-binary i think pe- relationships can make anybody just just crazy quote unquote you know we got to be careful how we use it but and that's what we're talking about nah fam you do stuff you don't normally do <laughs> and you yeah. get mad over you don't normally get mad at. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is so tough about relationships? It's like, this yeah. is something that everybody kind of ends up getting into in some point in their life. It's just part of like the human process in my opinion. But it's just like, it feels like, especially the more you, the more you know, the more you get to know this, the same person, like, it seems like the harder it gets. To some people, but maybe maybe I'm tripping. What do you what do you feel like is tough about a relationship? I mean, so I'm so I'm thinking about it in con in the context of the question and the album, um, because you know the second part of that, uh, what's worse, looking jealous or crazy, or like being walked all over lately. Mm. I'd rather be crazy. Mm. She like call me crazy then because I'm I don't want to do this anymore. Ooh. So I'm like I think mm. that's what makes it pull something else out of you. I mean you're. I used to think it was strange. You know, my, my husband is the first serious boyfriend I ever had. So I would say it's my first boyfriend. You know, there might there might be some people who disagree. But <laughs> I, 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 I totally <laughs> agree with that statement. Yes. <laughs> um, thank you. Some about some people, yo, we talked for, for like a year. We did, but we wasn't together. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's another conversation. Millennials and talking. Um, Man. But I digress. Yeah, I think um, you're trying to, all that to say, I used to be confused by it, right? Because you have your family, which are these people that you've grown up. So for years, you've known these people. And then friends, oftentimes, you know, they happen and you've been rocking with them for two, three years. You're like, yeah, this is how I know we've been through it. 
and then you meet somebody and I feel like three, four, five, six months into it, you're just supposed to know. Like that's just who you're supposed to run, spend the rest of your life with, right? So I think relationships are difficult because you're building um, family with somebody who, as mm. you're learning them, um, yeah. and you also, depending on how you negotiate that relationship, right? Everybody doesn't do it the same same way. But uh, for me, I'll say, I, I think it's um, like, you're my life partner. And you're also supposed to be my emotional partner. Like everything is is you and me, um, and we live to, living together is is the hard part. <laughs> so <laughs> you're nego- right because you you could be tight with your friends, but you don't live with them. So how do yeah. you negotiate um, when you want to feel loved and accepted by this person, but they always you know yelling at you about your drawers on the floor? That doesn't you know <laughs> yeah. I'm be, as the person who yells about the drawers. <laughs> It's like, hey, I'm like, why can't you just accept me for me? Like my friends do. I ain't your friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that yeah. ain't what we doing. So I think it's you got it requires you to be somebody um who is committed to like your whole life shifts because you're committed to making that work. Like that is priority. That's hard. Cause we selfish yeah. by nature. <laughs> That's hard. Yeah. Um it's tough because at least for me, like I show my wife, which everybody know her name. I show Drew all my flaws, like all of them. Like I'm not afraid to like mess up and tell her. And, you know, sometimes it feel like uh, she can use it to like, well, you know, in, in, in not even on purpose, but it's sometimes it can be used as just like <laughs> a little jab here and there. And it's like, you know, I'm showing you this because I'm I'm comfortable with you. You know, why use that, you know, back yeah. at me and vice versa. I definitely, you know, like the more you know somebody, the more you can, um, you able to, you know, use things against them or, or, or different things like that. So it's, it's very interesting how you have to, uh, being able to like be vulnerable with someone and hoping that it all works out. It's, uh, it's just like yeah. a weird process, man. I think just being vulnerable, vulnerable with another person that's like new to your life, not new to your life, but new to you, like your family. It's just like when you're vulnerable, when you open up fully and then they do something that like you're not used to, I think that's what can make you be crazy as <laughs> as, as Tyler was saying. Like, like, I think like just opening up yourself, like, cause, even with your family, like the family you grew up with, you're not fully open with them. Like you love them. Like you're not a lot of some people in your family, you're not fully open with like, like that. Yeah. Like some people, everyone has like that one or two people that they're like, they, they tell everything to, but like when you have that person that comes to your life that you tell everything to, that you're fully vulnerable, fully open with, and like they do something that's out of the norm to like out upset you or like, like, something you're not used to them doing, I think that's where you can see like, oh, now you hurt me because it's like, I give you everything or like, I've told you everything that I have. And it's like, you just ruined it. You yeah. get what I'm saying? Like, Yeah, and I think, I mean, and I don't know, I'm not trying to jump ahead because I know y'all talking about Black love, this beautiful, beautiful Black History Month. But <laughs> I think it's complicated and I, I feel you know, generationally, uh, millennials and, and this, we doing some things differently, but Indeed. it's complicated if you're talking about vulnerability within Black relationships, period. Um, mm. And the album talks about that too, you know, with Daddy Lessons and even the visual album with the 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 poems about uh, becoming your mother and being your mother. And Beyonce has been open about that too, with Take, take That Ring Off. Uh, got Boy, when she threw that ring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, take that ring off, and we also got um the the al- the song that you know the leap song that I I used to bang um in high school, which was uh Lost Your Mind. Mm. I don't know if y'all familiar with that song. No, 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 no. Um, I, think I, I think I remember. It. I think I remember <laughs> so, uh, that song. I know how my mama felt getting run over, but this ain't a cycle here. This one is over. Like that's that's a part mm. of the the song. But it's about like catching that somebody cheating. Yeah, uh, catching someone cheating. But she's talking about that. Um, song is so so good but <laughs> I digress I think um 
And we can also, man, listen, I'm trying not to get off subject because I can talk about that. Ah, this, That's why this, I love This Beyonce. is what we do. We, I, yeah. we get off subject. Bring it back. <laughs> we get off, yeah. We, we, we get off subject, we bring it back. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. Beyonce. I mean, and that's what she does in this album too, is she showcases, cause she does, you know, grief is usually five phases. She gives us 11, um, yes. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yes. But she she talks about the the beauty of it um, and the difficult parts of it and what that looks like for her as a woman. And I think we both all of, uh, we're talking about the binary genders um, and the way that we're, we've traditionally been taught. It's like, I, there's plenty of things um, even if people didn't say it to me, some women have said to me, not even my mama, people at church, don't you ever let a man know about your other bank account, right? <laughs> Just Ooh, like, it's God. certain things, oh. no, for real, like you always got something to decide because if they know they're going to dip, girl, <laughs> we happy you get married, but if you if they know they're going to dip, so you don't tell them. Um, and then you can't ever really, because I'm, I'm blunt. Like, I'm, yeah, I don't yeah. know, yeah. you know, maybe it's a sign thing. I'm a Sagittarius, whatever. I don't, hey. I really don't know. <laughs> Sag gang, yeah. I'm gonna praise Moon too. You know, my family uh-huh. gonna hear this and be like, "We don't do that." <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I think Jesus is okay with it. Um, so <laughs> for me, the Aquarius Moon and all that, but I'm blunt. And then you know, I'll say something, and and I'll be talking to a friend or something. And I'm like, "You can't tell a man that. Hmm. That messes with his ego, right?" And so I think oh, even so with men questions. coming in, there's certain things you're not supposed to let happen I know between being a little transparent me and my spouse uh he said it like he thought as long as he paid bills didn't cheat um and you know came home every night everything was going to be good and then we start having issues with like emotional availability and stuff he's like what is this why are we having problems (laughs) I come home I pay bills I don't cheat I work what's the problem and so I think and you know (laughs) I'm sorry but I'm sorry but like I'm sorry to cut you off, but that sounds like me. <laughs> that sounded that sounded like me. Um, whenever, yeah, whenever there's like some problems, or whenever she, whenever Drew would complain, I ain't do something. It like, bruh, I pay these bills. I'm not cheating. <laughs> like I come home. I don't understand why you, we even complaining about this and that. Yeah. Um, but yeah yeah I mean that's I'm crazy. just saying like and so going off what um Jalen was saying in terms of relationships I think as black people um we were told you know, that's gender wise but it's also you know what a, a black man is supposed to do is protect his family not let you know crazy stuff happen um to his wife like there's a certain yeah. certain yeah and it was women it's a, dif- a difference because you know especially as a, a woman who has been single in the last couple of years, I've <laughs> been married um, for you know, going on three. Um, but, you know, shout out to Black Congrats. Love always. You know, <laughs> Remy and Pat, what's up? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I think, um, you know, there's certain things where we're like, we want to be fully vulnerable with our partners, which is yeah. not something that everybody has always wanted. I think I, I can see yeah. for myself, I grew up seeing, um, black women being having an insular community and then the black men having an insular community and mm. it's not to say my parents don't love each other you know it's not to say that they didn't and that they don't and all that but it's it was different um in terms of what i saw and so now i'm like no i want everything you know and i think yeah. beyonce does too yeah. right she talks about how jay is her soulmate all the time yep. ever since dangerously in love where she said i love you 50 million times to that man <laughs> on that check over and over Beyonce yeah. song. Wow. That's my um, favorite Beyonce I, yeah, song. Yeah, that's my number one. No, no, that's, that's my number two. That conversation. That's my number my two. My husband loves that song. I don't love it like that. I feel it. That yeah. might be. I mean, it was for Jay, so maybe that's what it is. I she feel it. Me, good. myself, and I is my number one. To be honest with you. When me, myself, that's and telling. I is like... that's a I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it too. That's telling. <laughs> oh, for a long time. Um. So I love dangerously well. This all right. That's a question. You 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 had a lot of gems, a lot of gems in there. So does a do you feel like a woman needs to be independent, like within of her marriage, like uh you know Beyonce always feel like um, she had she got to have her own or like if something happened she already knows she'd be fine because of who she yeah. is, right? So <laughs> does. 
you know, I've seen a lot of women talk about this, even like Tiny, T.I.'s wife has talked about this before, how she relied on T.I. to do everything. And T.I. wanted to be that person. Yeah. T.I. goes to jail and it's like, she had to pretty much almost like start over and build up herself. So when he came out, she was like, I'm fine. You don't need to do this stuff for me. You can go do, you know, something else for yourself. Like, do you feel like in the marriage, as much as the, I think protect and provide needs to have a different definition, maybe. But do you feel like you, I'm, I'm going all over the place. Do you feel like you need to have like a certain independence? Within? You know, I follow you. Um, I do want to, you know, preface this with whatever's working for your situation is working for your situation. Um, however, comma. Uh, I do think, I think we got to be real and I'm not being shady. Uh, we gotta be, uh, Beyonce in particular embodies that, right? Um, I think, and for my, for me in particular and a lot of women I know, black women, right? And she said it, um, cause you know, I always, I just, Beyonce reels be on play on my, my Instagram. I just, uh, <laughs> but she has, she said it where she, um, she said that, uh, she was so mad because so the bill, bills 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 record was brought to them and they were like this sounds like a man paying your bills we don't we don't promote that that's not what we're about that's not what we want so they changed all the verses she's like the only reason we would want him to pay him is if he ran the bills up so all the mm. verses were about that and she said nobody listened to that everybody thought it was about having a man sponsor you <laughs> and so then she came out with independent women she's like i went in the studio i was like we want something that people can say is independent yeah i digress <laughs> um I'm going to quote a little Will Jada situation too that I think transformed a lot of a lot of black relationships. I know in terms of people thinking about it, it's like you can't um, expect your partner to make you happy. Right. And I think there's an independence that's fi- financial as well as emotional yes. that needs to be at play um, in the type of relationship I would like to have, the type of marriage I would like to have. Right, and it it, it shifts things, and we've been through both of those. Um, Cause he was further along in his career than I was when we got married. I had just finished school and he, um, he finished a year before me, but had had that opportunity to get the job here in San Diego. <laughs> so, you know, we moved out here and I was basically like, well, we here for your job. So you, you go ahead. You tell me how it's supposed to go. <laughs> I don't want to be here for real, for real. Uh, <laughs> and it wasn't about me, you know, following my dreams or goals here. Cause I really just didn't want to be here. Um, right. <laughs> so when he would ask me, what do you want? What are your goals? Like, what is going to happen? What, I'm like, we, to me, we threw those out when we came out here. So there was a whole conversation, but I do think once I realized, okay, I can still have what I want. I can demand what I want. Like, Hey, no, I'm not going here with you. You, mm. cause he travels for work all the time and wants me there all the time. And that was the thing about gender roles, right? I think men often are like me and my wife doing this, you know, she ain't mm. going to stay by herself somewhere. Like, people know she knows she's there by herself she's not safe blah 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 um I was like no I don't want to go I'm not gonna go I'd rather stay here and work on my book work on my craft uh so all that to say I think that oh sorry larger thing I want to say I'm talking a lot but I hope y'all following me we listening I think that does come back now we got to be clear about it in this unpopular opinion it does come back the whole city girl sweetie narrative that we're getting fed now <laughs> I mean, I love gotta sweetie, be real. Man. I love gotta them too. Be real. I love them too, but I see what you say. I love yeah. them too, but it's um I, I listen all day. That's my type, okay? Like <laughs> I'm here for it. Um but I does I do think that combats where we are right now in terms of, you know, she said if a man can't afford to get you a Birkin. I if that's you, if that's for you, boo, yes. You know, if, if you are balling on that level and you don't want to feel like you have to carry a man, that's different. Mm. I believe for what I want, I don't want my spouse to have to carry me and I don't want to have to carry my spouse. Mm. So what that does mean is there needs to be a level of financial independence um, and it does need to be a level of emotional independence for the relationships who work. Underneath of all that is, of course, I would say the emotional baggage, for lack of a better term, um, the generational and emotional baggage, but also the reality that if something is to happen, I need to know that me and my baby, we're going to be all right. (laughs) We're going to live a good life. (laughs) Like I need to know that. And so 
there's a, a personal responsibility underneath of that in case something goes left. But I think above all, you know, Beyonce didn't get married to Jay till she knew she was where she wanted to be. Mm. Because mm. as we were talking about relationships, especially marriage requires a compromise. And if you got to be on your your hustle tip for you right now, where you can't think about anybody mm. else, can't compromise, you got to be in, in Bali for six months doing your project. You got to live there and not think about that other person. Um, you, if you got to be single right now, then this marriage is going to challenge a lot of that. Right. It's just going to. So, yeah. No, I think I believe in all that. Uh, Jay, do you, how are you, uh, do you feel like you have emotional independence in your relationship? I would like to believe so. Like, I mean, I feel like in a relationship, like each person, you got to love yourself before you love anyone else. So you got to make right. sure you're, you're, you're good with everything you have going on with you before you can even attempt to try and start a relationship with anyone. Yeah. So like I have my can I things. A I'm sorry, yeah. I'm cutting you off. What does that what does that look like to maintain it for you? Like how do you maintain making sure that you're emotionally independent and that what you're doing is good um without wrapping it up too much in your partners? PS5. Ooh. No, I'm playing with you. <laughs> <laughs> You said PS5. I mean, I have my things that I do that I like to do by myself. Like this, this podcast, this is my thing. This is she has nothing to do with it. Like I ask her for help every now and again, but like she's like, that's your thing. I'm gonna leave that with you. And I this is something I enjoy enjoy and this makes me happy. So and I have things like my I do on my own that like like I go I go to the gym. That like they things I have for myself that make me happy, like I play video games. That's my thing. I need my time to play video games. But like, um, for me, it's like the things you do on your own are like important to like make sure you get your mind clear and all that before you go to your partner with like things that's like she don't, she don't need. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't really like, I'm trying to like phrase this in a way that makes sense. But like, I feel like once you have your own space and like your own routine and then you know what when you're with your partner like you guys have your routine together and then you have your routine on your own see I have different schedules from my from my from my fiance so like I have a lot of time where I'm not I work at night she works in the day so like that time when she's at work I'm on, I'm home and that's my time. So like, that's my time where I have to like be on my own and like really look at myself. And then I have time to like miss my partner and want to be with her. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I see what you're saying. Like having that time by yourself. Yeah. Um, I will, for me, I've been like playing golf. That's been my thing, man. Trying to like just get in the way, doing something, um, reading books. But I feel you on that where it's like, I needed to be on my own. Cause I'm I'm really like a uh, what's the word? In in what's the introvert? Word? Yes, in, introvert. introvert. I'm low key an introvert. So I I for most of my life I've much preferred just to do stuff by myself. Um, so it was it's was it's always a changeover. And Drew like, can I can I come with you? I'll be like, why? <laughs> 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 uh that was that was very interesting um but i do feel like it's important to have those moments where you can focus on something for yourself so that when you do spend time with your significant other you can give them your full attention yeah um because it, yeah it, it's like if my wife talking to me and i'm just thinking about something else it's almost like what's the point of being there you know yeah um so dang we are just getting places. We're getting places today. This is <laughs> this is a good one. Um, all right, let's all right. <laughs> what is Beyonce really upset about in this album? <laughs> let's talk about it. Let's we, talk about this. What is what is she really uh, mad about? Because she starts talking about. It sounds like the man just lied. I don't know if it's lying or or allegedly cheating. 
allegedly. Okay. We have to say allegedly. We but nobody did he say knows. He did in, the, in his album. He did not. Oh, he, he never he explicitly said he did. Boy, bye. Yes, I he, thought he, he did. did. All right, he said I almost. I'm paraphrasing. Can't remember the almost. What good is a Menage Trois? For a Menage, he uh-huh. definitely. He said, "What good is a Menage Trois when you have a soulmate?" That is. So what was he apologizing <laughs> for? <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> I apologize to my wife every day. I ain't do nothing. <laughs> I just oh, yeah. say I'm sorry for something I may have done. I mean, <laughs> I ain't trying to give, you know, side chicks any real room. Um, but <laughs> the one girl did. Uh, it was a, a woman. Um, is she a talking dancer. about Becky with the good hair? Yeah, no, but there was a dancer who actually put a track out that I called him Sorry, Miss Carter. Oh, dang. And she said that she had messed with Jay in the strip club. All right, what does messed with mean? I, I did not care to know the details yeah, <laughs> I, I feel said. like mess with once you mess with and like i wasn't gonna with. listen to the track because like i said you know out of respect for my <laughs> yeah, queen not gonna get um, and the royal yeah. family i was like <laughs> but um i think honest to goodness this album is so layered and so multifaceted especially the visual album it's almost yeah impossible for me to separate the album from the visual album right um I really do feel like, and I think she was doing that purposefully. She's been doing it purposefully uh, for a very long time. Um, but I think that the visual album to me was the film. And then I have the soundtrack in my car. <laughs> so right. it's right. hard to separate it. But I feel like she was angry about all of it. And I, I think mm. it, it begins with Jay, right? And, and the cheating. The alleged cheat, if that's what we're going to do. Uh, <laughs> if we doing it. Oh, okay. Uh, I didn't know it was an alleged. alleged. I thought it was all out in the open. Yeah, it was like <laughs> the, the, the unfaithfulness. Um, But on top of all that, she's mad about the generational stuff, right? We mm-hmm. have Sabrina Fulton in the visual album along with, um, oh, see, I don't want to lie. Hold on. <laughs> three other two other mothers so it's three mothers in total yes. who were there um oh uh, eric garner's mother yeah. and someone else's mike brown uh, mother, mike mike brown uh, oh also. she shed a tear i was oh my goodness <laughs> right so she has the these um mothers there um she she has uh her own you know family like she puts all that on the table i think it's it's the album that's angry about how culturally um black women have been you know that isn't this the same album where like malcolm x is quoted right <laughs> like um the black woman is the most yes yeah yeah yeah. Yes. yeah so she's mad about all of it and and about how in intimate relationships come on somebody mm. uh you expect there to be some type of safety right me right. being and I'm, I'm gonna be honest put my own stuff out there I was never going to marry a white man. <laughs> it was never going to happen. I just could not fathom myself coming home and ever explaining Black anger. That's me personally. You know, other people do what's right for you, okay? Um, not hating on your interracial love. But that was never going to happen for me. I just couldn't do it. Um, so it's like I expect to be in a relationship with someone who understands it, who gets it. And even in this relationship, knowing everything you know, and to her in particular, knowing about how my daddy ran my mama over. Mm-hmm. Okay. Shout out to Miss Tina and her new love, Lawson. They so beautiful. Hey, Miss Tina. But, <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's like, you know how my mother, you know all this. You know everything about me. Speaking to the vulnerability piece. And you still gonna disrespect me like this. Mm. Nah, fam. Yeah. And we got a baby. Yeah. Nah, fam. <laughs> like, yeah. Nah, it's just like nah. It's it's um. It's disrespect. I'm, I'm angry. The the day. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's really what it is, and it's it's you know that you would also if we go back, take it back, and she's brought it up for brought that track back and given a new life in her recent performances with resentment. Right when she changes it at the end, you know she be doing the facial expressions. Like I know she was attractive, kind of. Uh, <laughs> she does all that, but it's um. You know, I, I'm full of resentment because you lied. 
Like if mm. we're going to be soulmates, we in all this, I believe all of that. I'm here supporting you, going hard for you as a black man. You know everything I've endured in the industry. I know all you could cry on me, whatever. And you going to give this woman what you gave to me like so easily. Like she just has all of that. It's like, I've been riding with you for all this time. So yeah, I think it's, it's the disrespect of the, it's the intimate partner disrespect that occurs when someone's unfaithful. But it's also the racial gendered violence that occurs when it's like, and you knew all this other stuff. Like, you know it intimately. Yo mama black. <laughs> like, you know what this looks like. You talk to me about what your daddy didn't do. And yeah. you gonna come out, come out here and do the same thing. Right? It's just like, come you on. You know, um, I think we're going to get more into Jay-Z next week. As this is our J and B series. Um, J and B. So And they're beautiful. It's Let's very talk about hard. It. They're beautiful. They are. The album ends with redemption. Come on. Like yeah. it don't yes. stop there. People like to stop it at the anger, but nah, fam, that's her boo. Yeah, that's that's the beauty of this. Um for one, Jay-Z showed a lot of black men that you you have to put in work in order to make it right. Yeah. Um, that was that was a very important aspect. That was important for me at that at that time when this album came out. I had to put in a lot of work to make things right. And Jay was definitely the soundtrack for that. Um uh, but Beyonce like showing forgiveness was I feel like while some people may have found that as weakness, you know, yeah, it's truly like a token of her strength, uh, to be able to go through those phases of uh of grief or go through those phases of a breakup and being able to find a way to make to keep her vow and work on that uh it's a true testament to her strength that a lot of people i feel like um don't want to put in that type of work um is is cheating allegedly (laughs) <laughs> it's cheating to cut off like for a lot of people it is like it's like the ultimate disrespect I feel like it's the ultimate disrespect to a relationship especially when you're like married and you built something and I feel like it's the ultimate disrespect <laughs> you know if like so I feel like well, all right, because Beyonce feel like him lying, him coming home and just not saying nothing to him. Like she just praying that he figures it, he he knows that she knows, right? I feel like um <laughs> like if 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 you came over like look, babe, I messed up tonight. <laughs> like I was look, I don't know what was going on. I messed up. If he just, if you think if he did that, is this, are you as upset? I'm just trying to, th- I'm not telling people to cheat and then tell the truth, but I'm just curious, like. <laughs> if, That's what Charlemagne would do. Yeah, 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 he did. He did. Yeah, he, he would did. cheat and then he'd tell his wife, I'm sorry. He couldn't, I guess yeah. it worked for him. He still. He's still but weird. I don't, I couldn't do it's that. It's just weird. It's just weird. Like okay. it's like why are you in this situation where but, you right. would think it's okay? Like it's in the back of your mind. Like you think it's okay to do that. It seemed like cheating. Like, it and shouldn't lying, even be like a thing. Cheating and lying seems to come like be together. Like like there's no way you could cheat and then just come home, say you did it, and go to bed. <laughs> like it's normally <laughs> yeah. like you come home and you just like. All right, bro, you just like keep it together. Like you messed up, just don't do it again. Just go take a shower. I'm, I'm not talking like I did this because that's not it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want my wife thinking <laughs> I was that nigga. But um, it's just interesting. I just, I'm just curious. I mean, look, the cheating was messed up, but it seemed like everything else after that is the real disrespectful part of the whole process. Like, bro, you really walked in here smelling like this woman. Your breath smelling like this woman. And you really expect me to just not act like nothing's going on. Who in the hell? Who the F do you think I am? (laughs) You ain't dealing with no average itch. (laughs) I'm 
mean, she literally says all this justified anger um mm. i think <clears throat> so i you know that's another conversation i have mixed feelings about the word strong in general i do think what beyonce's album did was make it it sounds how it sounds like she made it cool to take your dude back <laughs> like it's like yeah. it's like it's cool like you're not a you're not weak because you can't find the strength to leave him like like yeah. i have every reason i have all i need in this life if i needed to leave him i could mm. um but I, you know, I just believe in us. Um, and she says, hold on, because I re- I put it in my notes because I was like, oh, I don't want to forget that. But um, I thought it was beautiful. She says, um, part of the poetry part, um, you're the magician. Pull me back together the way you cut me in half. Mm-hmm. Right. It's like you, mm-hmm. you are, you are the one who did, did the hurting. But in the same way, you are the one like Tyler was saying, you know, who could make it right. Yeah. Um, I think strong often is the label black women get in particular because i mean it, it means you you had to go without something though people only mm. think you're strong because you don't have something that's another conversation but cheating is cheating a deal breaker <clears throat> i think the world we live in today makes it so i don't understand it that's another com- i don't i don't understand it because the world we make we live in today makes it so easy like you could find somebody you want to do an open relationship go ahead you could find you can find yeah. multiple people who are like i'm cool with that you know like we have our agreement and arrangement you know get yourself checked out keep us safe keep your family safe you know shout out to insecure for t- making yeah. you know putting that I, out there too i was just yeah. thinking about dro yeah. right yeah Such a it's like man. you know if that's what you want to do yeah you know um do that i think um and and be as clear about the fact that she thought it was a deal breaker. Yeah. Right? With the every promise don't work out that way. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And you know, she calls him a B-I-T-C-H in that, Yo. In that track, oh which my I goodness. was like, Bro, the disrespect, the disrespect. <laughs> he said, B, I scratched out your name in your face. Um, oh. So, but personally for me, I, I can't speak for it because I'm not in the situation. So I, mm. I, I was right now, yeah, it's a deal breaker. I know. Ooh, yeah. Nah, fam. Nah. But I mean, acknowledging the truth that I'm, you know, three years in, um, and we probably dated for a year, year and a half prior to. So if I built a whole empire and a life with you, it's gonna be harder to walk away from, especially yeah. if I believe that you love me. Yeah. <laughs> like you love me and we are we are um a team, we are soulmates. Like if I believe that. That's going to be much harder to work walk away from. Yeah. yeah. Like versus somebody you just have an agreement with. It's like, oh well, you broke the agreement. Yeah, peace. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like um, I feel like it's it's nothing wrong with taking someone back if they cheated on you. But I feel like if they did cheat on you and you don't want to be in there, be in the relationship, there's nothing wrong with that either. I feel like both. I feel like if someone, I feel like a lot of times when someone takes someone back that cheated on them, I feel like people think like either they're like weak or like it's like, why would you do that? Just gonna do it again, yada, yada, yada. And I feel like that that is a possibility, but I feel like if the person you're with, you know, and you truly like love them and like you tell them like, this is like, this is your one. And it's like you do it again. Now it's over. Like, it. I think if there has to, it's like, if you do if, some, if someone cheats on you and like you give them another chance. I feel like that's the last. That's the only time you can't bring them back. You can't take them back again because it's like, you know what you did to me the first time you did it. Now you're gonna do it again. You know what that put me through. So why? I mean, and you saying that <clears throat> yeah. makes me. Excuse me. Makes me think about. Um, I don't know if you remember Mary Mary's show. Uh, with Eric oh, and Tina. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, was like, I never watched it, but I remember that show. Mm. Nah, he saw, and she says that. I mean, it, it kind of went viral on the internet a little bit where she said it. Like, uh, so he cheated on her multiple times, Tina, um, but told her about it. Like, so it, it wasn't like she, he cheated and she took him back. Like, he cheated and, you know, they were trying to work it out, but he would tell her that it was multiple women, like, every other day for a little bit that's what she made it seem like so it's like you know she took him back and he was like oh what she don't know is that it wasn't once (laughs) so then he told her oh what she don't know is that it wasn't just one person then he told her that and she was like i feel like you're asking me to take you back 
30 times because you're telling yeah. me different information. Wow. Um, That's, so, mm. yeah. No, nah, I think um, it's comp, man. It's it is complicated. Yeah. Yeah. I'm be, I'll think- be, uh, I say for me, <laughs> y'all don't lie to me. <laughs> for me, I I'm ain't gonna lie. To. Uh, I always tell myself, like, bro, if my wife ever did something, she got she got a pass, bro. <laughs> she she got <laughs> one pass just just for dealing with me. Like, <laughs> I'll be like, look, in my mind, I'm like, bro, if she did, I can't even be mad at it because I'm a I'm wild, bro. <laughs> like, I'm cold. <laughs> I got a question though. I know it ain't my podcast. I got a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, would you want to know the details? Oh. Um, Some people say they need that in order to forgive. Like why this person, what was happening for you emotionally I, so that we can repair that and move forward. I, right? I, Some people are like, I don't want to know nothing. Yeah, I need the why. I, I do need I, the why you do it. I need it, the like, explanation. The details, like I would need the why and who would better. <laughs> I just want to know the techniques. Yeah, if he Ego. was better, if he was better, how I mean, what he did? How yeah. could I perform <laughs> in a better fashion? But yeah. like the 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 nah, I don't need to really know what happened. If he if he was better, I might need some like notes. But if if I, <laughs> if if like he was trash, I'm like you know what? I I don't need to know this. We, we gonna leave that alone. I kind of like knowing everything, so I'd probably want to know everything. Just tell me. Just get it all out. I feel like you get it all out. Like, once everything's on the table, there's nothing that can, like, surprise me. Mm. So I, I do just, need a name. Just, like, I need a name. Need name, address, yeah. phone number. Uh, yeah, I need our Instagram. Social security. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I just want to make sure if I see this man, I know who he is and, and, yeah. it's, and it's time. Just and I can give him a look. <laughs> yeah. I, I can, can maybe give, give him a look. You like, give him that look. You know, you know, I know. You know. You know, I know, I know we know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Get your keys together. Get ready to punch him right in the face with the keys in your hand. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. My bad. My bad. Oh my <laughs> so violent. Yo, I'm violent. If I'm to move on, like to, not to, if we are to stay together and move forward, then I'd have questions. Yeah. Yeah, but if we're not staying together, I don't need to know nothing. Yeah, if I'm if nothing. I'm piecing out, it's like, oh, that's what you did. I'm on to the next. You know, I don't know. I I've never really been in that situation. I've always I'm not a I'm not I'm not a everybody know. I've told my story on this podcast. I'm not a cheater. Okay, but when I was broken up with my wife and we got back together, um, there was a lot of questions she had for me. You know what I'm saying? Like I was I was on the side of having a, like having to answer all of those questions and um it's definitely not a fun place to be in uh it's very like but do you really want the truth <laughs> like do you do you really want to know i'm just just let you know before i tell you this you know what i'm saying um it's just hard on on, on both sides but 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 if you're the one that was like is coming back and if you're the one that did wrong and want to come back then you really have no choice and you really have no yeah. say in the matter. It's like, you, you got to do what you got to do. There's no, like, like we talking like in, in uh, like lemonade, I, like Jay-Z really like put in work. Like we'll talk about next week with his therapy and really understand more of himself, his parents, like uh, even Beyonce put in work to learn more about herself. You know what I'm saying? Through learning about her lineage and, and talking about her and her father and all of that stuff. Um, there's definitely like that. There's always that period of like having to do some serious communication. You know what I'm saying? You want to make it work. Yeah. 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 And you know, it's just crazy. I've been doing a Bible study with my um my in-laws. And it's been like a couple's Bible study. So like my in my in-laws and then um my aunt, her husband, my cousin, her husband, my brother-in-law, and his husband. I mean his wife, I'm sorry. <laughs> and um <laughs> it just seemed like every relationship, maybe not everyone, but it, every relationship goes through just a very tough period. 
it could be the like man, and for most of the ones in in the Bible study, I ain't they're gonna put nobody on blast, but it seemed like the man always did something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> the man did something stupid, and he had to come back and put the work to, and do the work to to bring you know just to to make it happen. Next thing you know, we're married. Yeah, but like I had to do something terrible in order for this. To, to get to a stronger foundation. And I'm just like, I hope this ain't the formula, <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, it don't gotta be. I think, I mean, cause you were saying, what is she angry about? I mean, I think that's part of part of it, right? It's like, why is this, she talks about it being generational, but it appeals to so many women because that is the experience, right? Like we gotta just wait. Like we gotta sit here while, you know, he goes out and does something stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and even thinking back to fences, right? Another work of art, right? Like, mm. where's his life gonna go? She yeah. don't have money on her own, independent. I'm talking about a little bit about what we talked about before with independence, but she doesn't have it yeah. socially at that time. Um, uh, what is it? Socioeconomically, they are poor. <laughs> so, what I'm gonna do? Yeah. I'm not gonna mistreat this child. I'm, I'm stuck here. So we here, and hopefully you get it right. Um, Man, she was straight. She was straight gangster in that movie. Yeah. Like, oh my goodness. <laughs> no, shout out to Viola Davis. Yeah. Every time um, she cried, made me want to cry. She had right? the snot coming out. Yeah, the snot, the snot coming oh. out. I was like, Ooh, good. I, like, I don't even know I what. I my Rainey's black bottom too. I right. saw that. I, I yeah. gotta watch that. Oh man, Chadwick she, Boseman. She, she kills it. Yeah. But she, yeah, she, I think she, um, there's frustration with being that like I said in intimate spaces like being the partner that's going to have to endure that and it's like yeah somebody gonna mess up it's gonna be him not always right women cheat too I'm not trying <laughs> to sit here and say that they don't right um but it's like and you got to be here with the kids waiting to for him to come back and you forgive him and, and then move on but he knew when he did that that he wasn't really fin to lose you right so um it do feel like no, I don't, but I think <laughs> sorry go ahead no, I'm saying it, it, it feels like a cycle. Right. Like, and you know, I don't, I think we hear, we hear to break that. I mean, you know, this, yeah. this album and Jay's album together included, right? It's like, it's not just, okay, I'm not going to do that no more. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's really Change like, no, behavior. we are, we are getting to the root of the issue and saying this stops with us because we are going to have children. You know, I know I'm jumping ahead. Uh, Beyonce talks about her daughter in the album, mm -hmm. right? Shows blue. Uh, and I think it's Jay's grandma's um birthday party where she says she took lemons and made lemonade um <laughs> i right? served lemons but <laughs> i made lemonade <laughs> and talking about how it's generational like high key yeah and so i think in jay's album he envisions um blue being the president right in the yep. future uh and so understanding that we don't want our children to to redo this is something i think we're doing so it it has been the cycle and B and J, I feel like acknowledging it's like, but we're not gonna keep doing that. Let me ask you something. Um, you know, you have two black men here that are well, I'm I'm married, Jay's about to be married. And uh, I must say, having a daughter is like the scariest thing to me. I, I, I got <laughs> questions, but go ahead. So let me you. ask you. I just I let me ask daughter. you. Let me ask you, um, uh, how can a black man, like, what would you recommend to a black man for raising a black woman, for raising a black girl? Man, um, <clears throat> considering where we are today in the world, um, I mean, number one, I don't understand why it's so scary. That's another conversation. Okay, okay. That's I, conversation. I, may, may I, I want a daughter. I, we can talk because you know Kanye talks about it too. As, yeah. as you know, as as That's far true. out there as he is, when he was talking about like he's worried about his daughter looking like his wife, and I'm like, what? No, like, that, that's not my concern. My concern is truly my relationship between me and her, and um, you know, it, oh, might, it okay. might be, it might be, but from what I've seen. <laughs> From, oh, other, from other black fathers and their daughters, but it just seems like early on, like, especially when they're younger, black men had this, uh, a, a, at least a decent relationship with the daughter, right? At least they go places together, it's all good. And it just seemed like they, once they hit the teens, it's like the mother, the mother is the mediator. It's just yeah. the mediator. 
I, I've seen this a lot. And then um, it's almost it's almost scary to me. Like, yo, all right, if I have a daughter, like, I'm going to hit 40, 50 something. And we not we not talking or I, I don't even know, like. Like it just it just seems a little <laughs> scary to me that at some point this relationship could get out of hand and I could possibly just be the person who helped birth, like <laughs> who helped make this birth. Like that's all I that I don't want to be that, but it just uh, to I it just from what I see in multiple like father daughter relationships, it's like dang, like they not even talking. That's yeah, crazy. I mean. That's been my experience, keeping all the way funky. And I think it's been easier, actually. And my mother actually said she had a similar experience with my grandfather. Um, around a certain age, it's just like, you know, pass you off to your, your mother. And then around adulthood, perhaps even after they give birth, right? <laughs> now yeah. there's a grandpa in the situation. The relationship shifts. Um it's been different with my biological father because I sought out relationship with him as an adult. Right. So we have a very adult relationship. Um, I think it's a couple of things. Um, you know, I think things are shifting in terms of what black men desire as fathers. And me and my husband just had this conversation um, because prior to, if we taking it back to great migration and all of that, right. It's, a, a black man did work like that's you and usually just to keep the roof over your head you were working like crazy <laughs> so um you know Robert Hayden has a, a poem about that uh, his father waking up in the cold and putting on boots and, and leaving perhaps you know saying bye to everybody real quick kissing them but the kids are asleep they don't yeah. see him all day he comes home he eats and he's exhausted um and so I do think mm -hmm. what shifted is that there's a desire to be emotionally present for your children in a way that there wasn't always, or the expectation was often that that would be for the mother to, to figure out. Um, so you're not just a protector and a provider anymore. Um, so what that means, honestly, is that there has to be sacrifice. And I think that's what I've seen Black fathers struggle with. I think, and we have some great Black fathers. Shout out to all the great Black fathers doing it, right? I'm not trying to say this is Black men, like not at all. I would yeah. never say that. Yeah. But I think... Um, you know, understanding that, yeah, you come home with a bunch of work to do because that's where we are, especially with COVID and your child wants to play with you. You can't just say, nah, you know, if you do that for two weeks straight and if you mad because they're closer to your wife or they don't even look at you that way anymore, right? It's like, you understand, no, I got to put work in to have fun with my child. Uh, <laughs> I think as children, specifically daughters, as young women, we can say grow um, and become, if, they're, if that's their choice, right? To become women. Um, you gotta you gotta understand that your daughter is becoming a sexual being <laughs> like that's where a lot of the tension comes from Whoa. like it's like yeah she's she's becoming a sexual being um and she may choose not to partake in that you know she may choose to be celibate until she's married um abstinent i should say until she's married um she may be asexual and that's not her jam you know you don't know but i feel like that's when things get scary it's like oh my gosh i have a i have a little woman now you know she got a period Oh snap! <laughs> like, like, what do I do with the period? <laughs> I feel like that's hold when, on, now. hold on, <laughs> right? Stop. I feel like that's when the shot comes in, and then the the protector thing kicks in the gear, forgetting mm. the emotional connection. And so you just gotta keep it funky, like that's your daughter, that's your daughter, and she's yeah. becoming this this woman. Um, and find ways. The same way that you might have to stop work to play with her to do that. If the emotional connection is important to you. Find ways to connect with her emotionally. Mm. Find ways to listen. You can't put in a whole lot of work in your marriage and go to therapy and all that and not be willing to do the same for your child. Like mm. you, you don't know how to listen to your daughter because you never had to listen to a woman for real till you got married. Mm. And unfortunately for the generation prior to us, I have seen it happen um, later in life for a lot of men. Like in their 50s and 60s, they go they're going to therapy her. with their yeah. wives because they never really you know listen and so yeah. now it's like yeah that's why your relationship with your daughter is skewed as well like you don't know how to how to listen to a woman like there's a real uh we call it massage and noir i'm not saying black men hate women don't get it twisted but there's something there that says that you have to distance yourself mm. and that's that's just not you know okay. it's not the case this is uh we've had you're the second woman on here to say black men need to listen 
<laughs> so, all right, maybe uh, I feel like this is a simple question, but like, how does one listen? <laughs> no, it's not. It's not simple at all. I think it's complicated. I think first and foremost, I love black people, and that includes queer black people. That includes black men. Like, I love black people. I love being black. It is Liddy McLit lit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, that being said, listening to someone with whom you have uh, a relationship with, and I consider that to be me and the entire Black community. You know, if you're telling me I'm mistreating you, I got to listen yeah. and I can't become defensive. Yeah. I can't Ooh, be like, okay. well, no, I mm. never said that. I didn't mean it like that. You're taking it. Uh, you're twisting my words. It's like, no, if somebody said what I did hurt them, what I did hurt you, you know, show me how not to hurt you. Cause that's right. not my intention. I want a relationship with you. Um, and I think, like I said, providing and protecting has been what in my experience and what I've heard black men say, what they've been socialized to do. Um, there's, there's gotta be more. Yeah. Yeah. Provide, protect. And, and then if we keep it funky, the way this, I mean, Fanon talks about it as well. So <laughs> even like theorists, uh, the way that because of chattel slavery in the U S right. Chattel slavery specifically meaning that, um, the U.S. was partic participating in the slave trade. Some boats, you know, we had slave ships, but mostly just by breeding slaves. Yeah. We get, get slaves here and we have a quote unquote mandingo and like all that kind of stuff. So a lot of the sexual um, stereotypes put on black women and black men come from that. And so for black men is protect, provide, and then also live up to that stereotype, that sexual stereotype, right? Mm. Which then can sometimes feed into the cheating. <laughs> Right. right it's like how i'm gonna say no i'm not a man if i say no to a menage Ooh. it's like th Ooh, that, yeah. that kind of stuff can happen i'm yeah. not saying it does all the time but it's connected so you're um, just saying no yeah so i think listening means for and women have to learn how to listen too i, I for me i think it's easier because i can i i consider that um but it's listening in terms of not feeling that you're being judged or someone's jumping on your back or somebody nobody's trying to attack you right um, yeah and there's some unhealthy people who are so <laughs> this doesn't work in every conversation okay right some, some people trying to make you crazy it's not women aren't above reproach um but no if, if someone's telling you you made me feel this way listen to that um and what i've learned personally i could talk in my own life and my marriage um, our therapist taught us this way of communicating called oink race, which is a whole acronym, but basically it centers empathy, mm. right? Like both of us felt like we weren't being heard, but the reason we couldn't hear each other and receive that the other person was hearing us is because we didn't believe the other person had empathy for what we were feeling, which I mean, on some real talking for myself, I didn't like, I'm mad that you told me to move the pen. How are you mad about the pen? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's so stupid right <laughs> like that is, and that's the energy i'm giving versus you then being like yeah when 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 you tell me to do things and stand over my shoulder it makes me feel infantilized oh, okay. i can hear that i'm like oh as a black man as a, a grown-up as a black adult right that's how the world makes you feel often and you don't want to ever you know have that in your intimate space that must be frustrating mm. and so for me, it was learning how to empathize and how to communicate that. Um, and I think that's what, in terms of when people say Black men listening, it's about taking the steps necessary to learn how to do it. Because I can't say what each person, we're individual people with a collective trauma past. Right. Um, and so what does that look like for you individually to work through that, to listen to people, to receive uh, constructive criticism? I don't know. But you got to put the work in to figure it out if you mm. want something else. Boy, these gems, these oh, gems. Um, so you know what? I think we need to change the perspective, Jay. I think protect and provide cannot be yeah. a definition. I think love and listen. I think black yeah. men. I think those like. I feel like listening is a big thing. But the listening. first thing you got to do, especially yeah. at least in a marriage, you got to love. Like that's yeah. Love and should love be yourself. the priority, right? Yeah, like you your, got that right too. Like, love yourself your first. Spouse and your, for your spouse <laughs> yeah. and yourself, you gotta love your spouse, love yourself, and then you must learn to listen. And I think after everything, protect comes out of love, provide comes out of love. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, I think that's key. Um, and if someone think? says you're protecting them incorrectly, be able to receive that. 
Oh yeah. my goodness, there's oh. so many more questions. Oh. <laughs> no, but for real, we, we, right? We, like... we, we getting close to wrapping up. We're getting close oh, to wrapping man. up. Oh man, it's getting I know, good. I know. <laughs> but 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 let me just all right, let me can you what does protect incorrectly? What yeah, what is expound what on that, that as as the, yeah. before we get into uh the quick hitters, expound on protect yeah. incorrectly. Um yeah, so A, I, I do believe you're going to hear me say, I, I think it's specific to the person, right? Okay. So yes. some women, uh, talking in, in my experience, some women might really like a, a, a dude who's ready to punch somebody in the face just for looking at their booty, <laughs> right? It's like, <laughs> we together, he looked at me, why you ain't sneaking? Like, what's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> like, whatever. Yeah. Um, but no, I think sometimes, you know, and I'm not saying that these are the same but because we talked about daughters, I'm gonna take it a step back. I think all parents, no matter your gender um, affiliation, struggle with protecting their child as they grow, right? It's easy until about that middle school. And I thought that's why I said accepting your child as a sexual being. What do I mean? It's like, yeah, your your daughter might wanna have sex. <laughs> and she might wanna date somebody. Oh Lord. And what that looks like is you can't show up at the door with a baseball bat. But why not? You can't. <laughs> you can't. Like that is a fantasy I, to do the if men she, in black. If she if she says that, that boy, black, black, bad boys, boy, bad boys to do the bad boys. Me now, boys. mind you, it's good for her to know that you can, and it's yeah. great for her to know that you will. But if that makes it so, I mean, you see, I'm sorry, I'm bringing this up. I love me some Iyanla, and she actually had that conversation <laughs> with that black man who went viral for talking about like providing and protecting his children. His show, his daughters were. Um, violated up with that I don't you know I don't want to trigger mm. people with with using specific language and they were afraid to tell him mm. and he was so frustrated like why didn't they tell me they were afraid to tell him because they thought he would go do something crazy mm. and they didn't want mm. crazy violent and they didn't want their daddy in jail right mm. so it's like he protect you have this persona of protection to the point that your daughters don't trust you to tell you when things are going on that's crazy with them because they think you're going to jump to that level yeah. Oh man. So right. it's, okay. it's, it's about oh, my goodness. So it's the same I think that in, makes sense. In wow. marriage too, where it's like I can't tell him this is going on or this is going on. I have to fix it because if I tell him this, he's gonna ask me why I didn't even why did I not say something when it happened? I was too scared or I was in shock yeah. or this and this. And I don't want somebody holding me to some standard that's like impossible. Right? It's like so let me go fix this first and then I'll tell him about it later. Yeah. Oh, right. And okay. it, that's that's what I think it looks like in some ways is if someone says, hey, I, you're you're protecting me to the point that I'm uncomfortable being vulnerable with you. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't, I don't, I'm afraid. Um, and not afraid. I think sometimes, you know, because of the way that Black men get stereotyped, hearing that your partner is afraid of you feels like another violation. It feels like another type of um, betrayal, honestly, right? And it's not, I'm afraid that you, and sometimes in domestic violence situations, it can be, but that's not what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm not afraid you're going yeah. to hit me. I'm not afraid. Um, I'm emotionally afraid. You're concerned that if I tell you, you going to do something crazy. I'm trying, like, I'm looking out for you by not telling you. And, the, and you will do it in the name of love, in yeah. the name of protection, and in the name of provision. Right. Mm-hmm. Because that is what you know. That's what you've been taught. You know above all else how to do that. But how to emotionally connect, how to be vulnerable, how to listen <laughs> without jumping to the hundred. You don't know right. how to do that yet. And the question is, like you were talking about with, um, is this a cycle? It's not necessarily, it's, it's the question is, do I want you to learn that on me? Like, am I am I, am I in a position to, to be there? And what I've learned, I'm honest, like, I love therapy. Black folk go to therapy. Um, but our therapist told me, like, you do, Alexis. That is what a part of this commitment is. You have to be willing to let him learn on you, with you, mm. and hold him to a standard that doesn't allow him to go off the rails. You know, I, I've been seeing this a lot online on Instagram. Everybody be like, you got to come to me with everything fixed. Don't come to me with the emotional. Yeah, I've this seen that. that. <laughs> I'm yeah, like, that's that's like what I'm talking about. It's like, how are you going to get in a, re- how you going to be in a relationship then? Because yeah. if, if that's the case, you're never going to be in a relationship. 
And you, yeah. you can be in a relationship. It's just the type of relationship you're in. And that's the problem. Oftentimes people are in those types of relationships which you just described and then turn around and get hurt when they find out that their partner is emotionally tighter with their friends or emotionally mm-hmm. tighter with their family. And it's like, well, how come you don't tell me that? You right. said you want me to come, come to you with everything fixed. These are the people who helped me fix it. Wow. It oh, ain't you. Goodness. Oh my oh. goodness. Oh, Oof. bro. All right. Oh, oh man, this that was a jump. <laughs> hey, bro. <laughs> Ooh. Lexi, thank you, thank you. <laughs> no, yeah. thank you for having me. All right, we're gonna get to some some hip hop. We're gonna get to some quick hitters, man. Favorite song on Lemonade. Oh man, okay. So you know that's hard. You know that's hard, but I dress up as Beyonce from the video for this song, so I got gotta go with it. Don't hurt yourself, fam. That's that's Ooh, my trick. When you hurt it takes me, me places. Yeah. I've never been yourself. cheated on, but yeah. When you lie to mm. me, you lie to yourself. Lie to yourself. Mm. Lord Jesus. This mm. was like church. And she's, this album she's, she's was vulnerable church. even in that, right? I'm messing yeah. up all yeah. your stuff tonight. Yeah. <laughs> this is what's yeah. happening. Okay. Um <laughs> Jay, what's your favorite song? I'm sorry. What's your favorite song? Uh, my favorite song is hold on, I wrote it down. Uh it's either sorry or hold up or formation. I had a I'm stuck between them three. You yeah. like the hype ones. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I like the, the hype ones. You put your middle finger up. And put my middle <laughs> finger up. <laughs> when that song comes Yo, up. Yeah. Um, let me tell you about sorry. Uh this uh, it was a woman I used to talk to, but we when we ended the communication, I got a text the next day from her at Beyonce concert performing that song, <laughs> <laughs> performing sorry, and I just laughed. I just couldn't <laughs> couldn't do nothing else but laugh. I was oh, like, God. and you know, since that day, I truly enjoy that song. I'll be like, hi, <laughs> <I ain't> sorry, <laughs> Linda, like yo. <laughs> when I was at that concert, man, I was going in on that. Um. I think my favorite song is Freedom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really Freedom. like I really like that one. Um, but the I got a on that track are dope. Yeah. Kendrick Lamar. I mean, I featured the samples. I'm sorry. I gotta say, don't hurt yourself. That drum, like whoever was the drum on that, that's probably one of the best, like whatever you call it, cadences. That's probably one of the best cadences I heard, bro. I mean that 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 cadence was. It's kind of hard to pick a favorite song with this album. Yeah, oh, it's it's very difficult. Very difficult. <laughs> to pick a favorite um, song. Okay, I will tell you what's harder. What's the worst song? It ain't that hard. Ooh, <laughs> which, which is the worst ooh, song? Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I think it's necessary, but because she put so much in the visual album that she didn't put in the actual album, I'm like, this could have just been, for me. This could have just been the visual album, but forward. Mm. Oh, I forgot about I that song. I really like forward. I thought it was part of Sandcastle. I did. I mean, it, it kind too. it flows into it, yeah. so it works. Yeah, but yeah. she barely put anything into that. Why yeah. not make that a part of Sandcastle then? Mm. I mean, I don't yeah, know. I, I get she it. could have just added it to Sand. She didn't even have to make that a song. Just make it Sandcastles. Mm. Oh, wow. That's the only. That's you know. I mean, I agree with you on that because I, for, I wow. forgot that was a song. I'm I thought be, it was just part I'm of Sandcastle. I'm gonna be real. I'm not the biggest fan of six inch. What? I like six, six inch. Maybe okay, I don't like the on, weekend. Hold on, hold on. First of all, but let me just let me just say, uh, she was sipping Ace with the Hennessy. That's that's pretty fire. It would have been dope if she said Ace with the Duce, but she was still <laughs> sipping this man's liquor while mad at the dick. <laughs> yeah, because you know, if, if nobody wins when the family feuds, you Ooh. know. If I'm finna take yeah. off everything and my chillin' about to eat off this. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I think it was really just the weekend. The weekend. So that's why. The, uh, the, but the, the video, right, it's all of it. The video for that made, it elevated it for me. I think okay. by itself I could understand. Yeah. But you know the fact that she's leaning, like nodding to, she works hard for the money. Yeah. Um, right? So Seven there's the nods to some like culture like black disco songs yeah, about yeah. uh patty labelle like it's Ooh, just like nice to I this ain't even peep. right so i'm like you can't not and then the video makes you think mind you all this is happening in new orleans so it makes you think about um I the mean, many women who got wow. their financial independence through owning brothels yeah right and and so what that came through came wow. with um black women's sexual agency saying okay Maybe. well 
we sell our bodies. <laughs> we have agency. We say we're good on our terms and that's how we make the money. And so the video is that, right? These black women dressed in period pieces mm. with her in the center with the red light, nod to the red light district. And then, you know, having the weekend who always talks about loving the strippers. Uh, right. <laughs> Shout him. out to the strippers. Thank Shout y'all. Out to <laughs> I, I, I don't hate y'all. Like, I do Had not get back to a strip club. But I mean, that's what it is. It's about like, owning the fact, like I said, those stereotypes that come in. Yeah. Right? Like, black women being Jezebels and it's uh so six inch and also sorry i'm gonna take a step back beyonce knows that she mm. is sexually desired like she makes money off people sexually desiring desiring her yeah and she knows that that's her persona and so she's going to work to get on stage and dance and be desirable um and what does that look like when she when she actually whispers at the end right that husky whisper uh kind of falsetto like come back right mm. it's like i, I actually want you you my spouse to be the one that comes back and then the video ends with them burning the house uh with all the women now wearing suits again a nod to this them becoming the ones who are now in charge of their bodies and their sexual agency and making money and they're mm. the bosses of their bodies so i that's why i can't throw six and shout because yeah. i just hey, i'm like Look. she do too much with it that, it might it that, might just be the weekend. That, this is what <laughs> it might be the weekend. This what this is what leads me into the big three question. Yes. Instead of the weekend, I think Drake would be there. Should be there. You think, I think Drake would? I think Drake would. Think be Drake better. would sound good on six. All right. I mean, the Drake basically copied the weekend on Take Care. I mean, he could just do the same thing he did for Take Care and <sighs> and replace the weekend. You put Drake on Six Inch. That's not a bad one. Yeah. It but, wouldn't have been bad. I just. The weekend does such a good job. I couldn't see nobody yeah. else on it. But she's done that before. It yeah, was going yeah. to be a real one because I saw Cole. I know y'all talk about Cole. She put a uh, Cole on um, Party. Right? Yeah, that's the name of the song. Yeah, but um, originally Three Stacks was on it. So yeah, yeah and everyone Stacks forgot. Burst. And everyone forgot J. Cole. Was they, was they, for, they forgot J. Cole. This was just they first. were just talking about this on Instagram. They was like, Wait, nobody remember J. Cole on party. This is Andre. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, yeah. So where where would you put J. Cole in this album, Lex? Oh, I mean, okay, I'm looking at the list right now because I want to, you know. Uh I feel like Cole would have to be on um hmm. That's really hard. All night, which is not my thing. He to me, he does better when he can slide into to something with with a little more, a little more to it. But all night, I think he would he would fit really well on. Okay. Um, and Dragon then I right had. Here, so. I was stuck between that and Love Drought. I don't know if I would put, he he would make sense on Love Drought, but um. I just think about the beat. The beat for Love Drop kind of feels like something Cole would do. It feels close to All Night to me, though. They do yeah. feel very... That's similar. why I was I was like teetering on both, so I picked both for him. Hmm. Yeah, I'm mad we both... Yeah, those are the songs that fit best. I would love to hear him on Daddy Lessons, but I just don't think that's where he belongs. Okay, so... Something tell me. I would like to hear Drake on a, on a, on a song like Daddy Lessons. Put that toxic man on there. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, it it adds a different layer to it now that I know he's a father. Yeah. Wow, I think yes. Being a father, prior to yeah. him being a father, I think he just would have rapped about him messing with a woman who had daddy issues. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I don't right. want to hear that. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't um, want to hear that on the track at all. <laughs> I think I first I'd like to put Cole on hold up. It's okay. a song. It's too er- okay. It's too early in the album to have a man's voice. That's my only issue. <laughs> Cause hold up is the second one. It's too early. That's just what I, that's just what song I think he would sound good on. Uh, you know, I feel you on that order. I do feel you on that. But I think all right, all right. I hear that though. Uh, let me see. I think Drake. Hey man, slap Drake on. Sorry, I just feel like <laughs> I just like I like to hear Drake go on these like be the different perspective on songs like that. To be like upset as yeah. So that's the that's the hard part, and I'm glad you said that because I feel like I feel like Drake comes in to be the different perspective often, mm. um, especially because yeah. you know he did that track with B. Um, what is that on my mind? Um, I passed my oh, bedtime. Yeah, no, off the on the Beyonce album. It was yeah. called what? 
What's it called? Like mind? Or mind. Yeah. yeah. Mind. mind. So he he comes in and gives the different perspective. Pull up on him. Now I remember. Uh, <laughs> so I think he gives a different perspective. And I just don't. Sorry is supposed to be an anthem. We don't need no different. Yeah. <laughs> I respect it. I respect it. Mm-hmm. Wow. That is an anthem. No, and that's why the that. weekend works because the weekend just kind of ad libs the song. Like he don't yeah. Yeah. do nothing yeah. else. Right. Yeah. So in terms of like a different perspective, I feel like we all are kind of in the same boat. I would have to add him to All Night <laughs> or Love <laughs> Drought too. Like, like if you're going to give me a different I had, perspective. Yeah. I had Drake for Love yeah. Drought as well. Oh, that was six okay. inch in Love Drought for me. For Drake. Um, Best feature. Best feature on the song. I, uh, I'm going to be real. I really liked James Blake on Forward. I know Beyonce not even in it, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I don't know. That part always, um, it's either I, him Kendrick, or- Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick. I think she's on for it a little bit. I'm trying to remember. I think like they sing parts together, but no, I think, Ken, yeah, Kendrick. For the yeah. culture, Kendrick. Yeah, yeah Kendrick. But however, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, because y'all know, don't hurt yourself my check. So I, got I was about to Jack say White. that. I was about to yeah, say Jack, Jack White. White, whoever he is. <laughs> never from the White like, Stripes. That, that means. From, from, <laughs> the white, from the White Stripes or something like that? I don't know. There's a sure. band called the White Stripes or something like that. I'm about to check him out. And a guitarist. That's, I think, I see. He y'all sounded coming. perfectly. Like with Beyonce, they sounded just so good on that. On that <laughs> yeah, hook. He, he's on a rock band. Called the White Stripes, I think. I think the band's called the White Stripes. Let me just yeah, it is. I just looked it up. He's best known as the lead singer and guitarist of the duo, the White Stripes. I'm gonna have to check him out. Look at that. I but yeah, you. I think she I know also some white things. <laughs> <laughs> I know some white facts. I know something. <laughs> I know a little bit. No, I think that's what she um, was doing in terms of trying to make this a multi-genre album, right? Yeah. She was, put him on the check so she could be like, no, this is a rock track. Boom. I mean, the same we saw with uh, Lil Nas X, right? That's his name? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah when he put uh, Billy Ray on the drum. Now people yeah. considered it, like, it was like, yeah, now it's country. Right. right. I mean, they got mad at Beyonce when she performed at the Country Music Awards. With the Dixie Chicks? Yeah, they was like, she's not, she's not country. She literally has a country song. Which people need to get it together because the mother... Of you know rock and roll and all these other ones is um sister of the third. I feel like people be forgetting we invented mm, everything. 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 Yeah, everything. Sure. Like America, y'all don't got no culture without us. Y'all don't got no no Shoot. life without we us. We made we made air conditioners. You ain't lying. <laughs> yo, yo, white people be trying to endure the weather. My nigga. Yeah. <laughs> give me some heat. Give me some AC. Hey. What is wrong yeah. with y'all? <laughs> and, uh, like, this, like y'all forget this nation was literally built on the backs. Of yeah. shadow slaves, so we please it. don't. Yeah, the we way these categories it. are created is is, mm. and so that's what she, you know, was trying to clean up. But now I agree with you. Jack White and Kendrick are probably my top two. Um, my best feature, I think we've gone through them all. Jay Z, any yeah. one of them? All right. Um, nah. the, the, our final segment in the show, we're gonna take it to the register. Uh, Lexi. This is where you give your your final statements that you would like to say on, on the podcast yeah. or the album. The floor is yours. Oh, oh man, final statements this is a big one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think that um, overall, of course, there's no disputing that this is a, a history making album, like yes. historical for her particular uh, canon and discography, but period <laughs> right um a big moment in american culture a huge moment in black american culture um and a huge moment as a beehive member uh, in terms of beyonce's transparency which we don't mm. we don't get often um i think the space she gave black women in pop culture um and in hip-hop cultures where there's a, a history of massage noir in particular um is something we all talking about like appreciated and admired um and are grateful for and she invited us to come in and take up the space to speak our truths to speak our hurts to speak our vulnerability because the sad truth is 
when it comes to infidelity. If it if it wasn't you, you know somebody who has been, and it might have been your grandmother, your mother, right? And learning those things and carrying it, um, moving forward to heal in terms of womanism, right? We carry everybody with us. Like it's, it's about black culture. Uh, so moving forward to heal in terms of loving black men, loving black non-binary people, loving the black intimate space because it's necessary and important um, is something that I feel this album just did flawlessly. And she looked good doing it. <laughs> like the, the, she didn't sacrifice nothing on the hair. Um, you know, there's braids there's weave it's all of it mm. like it's just everything and louisiana is celebrated black culture is celebrated um black there's a whole hood culture there's a whole right. hairstyle black hood from, culture. Her, from that video she got um she has uh, poor people so mm. she's not afraid to talk about poverty and the culture that exists there um how beautiful black people are across all of that so i feel that i feel the album is just a celebration of black womanhood and black love healing um but also black American culture Indeed. and what it takes for us to move forward. Amen. Oof. Amen. I, I don't think I don't have anything to top Jay, that. Jay, Jay, <laughs> right, yeah, you I, should, I, I, what I you got, bro? To, all I got is I, I was just I'm just gonna say thank you for coming on. Nah, <laughs> I, 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 got, I guess that's you what know? I can say. <laughs> If y'all want to talk about the Lion King album ever, I would love to discuss that with you in terms of what she does religiously, but that's another conversation. We're about to to make you our Beyonce correspondent. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, we have Lexi here with uh, another Beyonce album. (laughs) Um, Appreciate y'all, both of y'all. Y'all are great. And I think what y'all are doing on this podcast is beautiful. Um, And I wish y'all like the best with all of this. Oh, thank you so much. Thank Thank you. you. Uh, Man, Lexi, you know, you already know it's all love over here, you know. Um, I really appreciate you coming on. Like when we decided to do the uh, lemonade, I was like, I know the perfect person. <laughs> I was like, I'm not doing this with nobody else. <laughs> um, so I appreciate you coming on. Uh, in regards to lemonade, man, um, first off, Jay-Z, like why you let her take you to Red Lobster? <laughs> okay. Come on, fam. <laughs> I know the cheddar biscuits is good, bro, but all right. Anyway, after I get the silliness out, Lemonade was definitely an album that um, at the time truly affected with uh, everything I, I went through in my relationship. It was very difficult for me to listen to it at the moment it came out. But, you know, time heals all. And the more I listen to this album, the more I'm able to, like, really appreciate it. Uh that this album really changed the game business wise it changed the game musically uh you know before this album i respected beyonce as an entrepreneur as someone who was a hard worker personally her music a lot of her songs didn't touch me it didn't feel like it was coming from her that's just me from the songs that i've heard but this album truly felt like it I was getting to know her. It truly felt personal and it felt black. <laughs> and um, I just, I just really, I really respected it. Um, much love to you, Beyonce, Miss Carter, uh, Miss Knowles Carter. I mean, not, you know. Uh, <laughs> the hyphen. Right, right. Uh, much respect to you. And uh, yeah. Um, if we do, if we do, what's, uh, if we do the, was it Lion? What's the name of that? Lion King. If we do the yeah, Lion the, King one. Oh, the Lion King. Hold on. Yeah. I got title right here on my phone. <laughs> hey, shout out title. We, we're going to need that. Shout out to title. We're going to need that ad. We're going to need that sponsorship one day. One day. <laughs> working on it. Yeah, right. Lion, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. The, the gift. The gift. The Lion the gift, King, the yeah. gift. We definitely, that is a great idea. Um, re- Real quick, one last question. If you would uh who would you like to hear on this podcast oh i mean like about music or just a good question would you like us to bring on is there yeah you know i took it from all the smoke all the smoke podcast if there's any you know uh (laughs) who would you feel like would be good who would you like to hear on the podcast oh man this is hard this is real hard um i think it'd be dope man what's his name 
is it is it D Smoke? I don't want to lie. Oh um, yeah, D Smoke. Yeah, if y'all uh, having an artist on, because I know for me as an artist who doesn't get to talk about it often, hear an artist perspective, like they just talking about you know their life and stuff. It is inspiring to hear yeah. how they be living. So you know, like yeah, I could keep chasing my dreams, you know. Um, so yeah, like uh, I having it, I'll say an artist. Period. D Smoke like popped in my head because he's just dope. But uh, he, is. Um, he is. Oh man. Yeah, I would say any artist, man. Like get okay. some like black artists out yeah. here, you know. We Give had them a exposure on, and experience, um, but we had a rapper on last week. Shout out Von yeah. Don. More hey. And then um, I'm trying to get some more of my my artist homies. You know. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it's people. been weird to like ask them. Sometimes I'd be afraid to ask. Not even a lot. And it, well, mm-hmm. including when I say artists, including authors. I don't know what's going yeah. on, you know, in your your own hoods, but um, some some black authors too who maybe talk about and write about love or black experience. That'd be dope. Okay. Okay. I appreciate we we appreciate. Thank that. you. Thank I you. appreciate y'all. And, uh, I appreciate that. Shout out <laughs> to black men. I shout appreciate out to the y'all. black men. <laughs> yeah. Yo, to uh. To our listeners, be on the lookout for Lexi's book coming in the fall under Alexis Jackson. I know I call Lexi Alexis Jackson. <laughs> Alexis um, V. Jackson. You put the V. Yes, in it. it is. It is called Black Women. No, that's the wrong one. My sister's country. My <laughs> sister's country. Be on the lookout for my sister's country in the fall. I'm excited to read it. Um, I'm really excited, actually. I know because I know you've been working. I know you've been working hard. So. First of all, Thank more you. power to you. I pray for all the success for the, that this book will come will come with. Um, praying for you and your husband. May your marriage continue to grow, continue to be strong. And to our listeners out there, once again, we truly appreciate y'all for listening. To our brothers, please make it home. To our black women, especially, we love you. This is the No Clearance Podcast. Peace. Peace.